Gas fitter exam cram session, video 13. Okay, galvanizing. As I go over the previous video, I noticed I was describing galvanizing as a coating of tin. It's not a coating of tin, it's a coating of zinc. The steel is dipped in zinc. Um, this, this is not a concern for this exam. I mean, uh, other plumber exams, yes, you do need to know that galvanizing is zinc. Um, and no matter, uh, no matter what we're working on, we always want to remain exact and thorough. So uh, I figure we uh, fix that now. So galvanizing is a coating of zinc. Uh, before we continue with test two, I wanted to go back to test one, question 48. Um, it was, which of the following materials is not permitted for flange gaskets in the gas distribution system? We, t we uh, determined it was rubber. The, but what I wanted to uh, point out was, okay, uh, of the choices, we had uh, C was non-asbestos fiber. That's your standard gasket that we're used to. You know, it's, uh, I guess, compared to a metal gasket, we could describe it as a few steps uh, above... Uh, you know, really heavy-duty cardboard. It's it's fiber. It's a non-metallic substance, non-conductive metal. The metal gasket, well, it's metal and it's going to be copper. It's going to be uh, a sheet copper gasket, such that when you tighten up, it's soft enough that it's going to form to the mating surfaces, provide a seal. It was the spiral wound metal that I mentioned. I wasn't exactly sure what that was, but I looked it up and in the interest of, you know, not leaving any stone unturned and making sure, you know, we've covered every single little milk and cranny of this uh, exam. The spiral wound metal is another metal gasket, but um, it's it, another term for it would be a high temperature gasket. You'll see these in steam systems, um, but I guess in a gas system, if you want to be super, uh, super uh, sure that this gasket's not going to blow out, this gasket's going to stand up to intense vibration, you'd use a spiral wound metal gasket. So what it is is it's going to be a ring gasket, and the outer ring is going to be one eighth steel okay that outer ring is strictly for strength stability it's going to make sure that the gasket can never blow out because well it's one eighth steel the inside gasket is going to be a stainless steel ring such that within it a graphite compound will provide the sealing Okay, and if we take a cross section of this gasket, we have our 1 8 steel, and then we're going to have our stainless steel ring in the middle. Like I said, this ring here will contain graphite within it, and as you're making up the flanges, let's see, these are the bolts making up the flanges, it's going to press against the graphite, it's going to press against the stainless steel ring, because it's just a little ring to contain the graphite, and it's just thin enough that it will compress under pressure, but the 1-8 steel, it's not moving anywhere. There's no chance that it's going to blow out. A fiber gasket can blow out. You can have a, it can, you, it can get eaten away. This is not going to get eaten away. Um, you can, um, for a metal gasket, the, the only consideration with a metal gasket, and this starts getting a little advanced, is that well, a metal gasket is conductive. If you don't want co electrical continuity throughout the line, if you want to break it, metal gasket's not your choice. You go with the fiber. And then you can ask the question, okay, well, if we're going to go with a fiber gasket, well, the flanges are metal, the bolts are metal, how do we stop, you know, you're still conducting the electricity. Well, 
if you're worried about conductivity then there's also plastic sleeves that you're going to put on the bolts while making up and non-metallic usually very hard fiber uh, washers that will sit underneath the metal washers so as you're tightening up you actually have broken the continuity but this is all advanced this this is not something that's going to be on the exam I just brought it up in that let's not have any questions at all so because uh, sometimes these choices a choice will be something that just, just doesn't exist it's there to throw you off here all these choices exist all these choices are usable um, but in a gas system the only one we cannot use would be the rubber gasket alright so spiral wound is this heavy duty or you uh, it's also referred to the a high temperature gasket metal gasket copper um, you've actually worked with metal gaskets uh, you, without uh, probably without realizing it in a ground joint union your plain old union your black union if you ever look at it one side is ground smooth and the other side also ground smooth but where you have a depression where the uh, mating surface is going to sit into it and squeeze it down you'll see there's always a copper or brass insert in there because steel on steel steel doesn't bend that much but steel onto the softer copper or brass insert will f will uh, will form to any slight imperfections provide that seal that seal so that in a sense is also a copper gasket it gives you an idea how a metal gasket would work in a flange okay now we can continue so uh, galvanizing question two uh, shall be considered an act shall be considered adequate protection for exposed exterior piping which we determined would most likely be the meter piping if the meter is outside the building outside the house it needs piping. The only piping we're allowed is steel. Galvanized steel is allowed. Why is it allowed? Why is it allowed outside, not inside? Okay. What they're worried about is imperfections in the pipe that somehow the galvanized coating hide. So you're not going to see it in a test. But the galvanized coating may give after time and that imperfection reveals itself and now you have a leak inside the house that would be a situation outside exterior they're not so worried about let's say it does wear away and the imperfection shows and it starts giving off gas it's outside and it's an amount that it's not so you know they don't consider that so dangerous that it's acceptable okay um, it's also the reason why you don't paint pipe before it's inspected and passed. They're worried the paint would hide an imperfection. Um, uh, and also with the code, let's say uh, we're only allowed steel. If you didn't want to use galvanized stainless steel, that would be, that would be an awesome job. Expensive job, but it, it would be pretty. It would be awesome. You can use it. Stainless steel pipe is steel pipe. You're allowed that. It's just it's really expensive. So we go with the black pipe and galvanized outside for the meter set. Okay, question three. The test pressure for gas distribution pressures up to half a PSI is? We went through great length establishing what the pressures are. So now... Like I said, a lot of questions are going to repeat itself. So, uh, good. So, up to half a PSI. What was it? We're going to say, we're going to say three for thirty. Three for thirty. So now, we're going to start getting into advanced memory technique. Okay, we took the table. And the first time we looked at it, we established things that struck out at us. Number relationships, you know, we're going to say high limit, low limit. What's the lowest uh, value in the tables? What's the highest value in the tables? What's the line in the table that strikes out at us that's going to be where we start off in our memory? 
and then build from there. It's up to you. I showed you you can start. Remember, this was um, this was our length of threads and how many threads table. Probably the table with the most information in it. And like I said, you could start from the beginning. You could start from the end or anywhere in between. I started from this line because it's the one that struck out at me the most because this was the weird one. The pressures. Well, we started off saying that up to half a PSI, uh, three for 30, right? Um, now the table is gonna say pressures up to and including half a PSI, three, uh, 3 PSI G, 430 minutes. Notice that, okay, we understand that. We don't have to memorize all of those words. We like to shave the words off in our memory and just have the numbers. Because once you have the numbers, the numbers are the hardest part. The numbers are what's going to get you the right or the wrong answer. The words are superfluous. Okay? Once you have the numbers, we can figure out, you know, we can start saying, okay, well, this is the pipe diameter. Duh, this is, this is going to be the length of the threads, and it's going to be the exact number of threads. You know, this can come later, okay? So just by looking at it, it's kind of easy to deduce, like, well, that's got to be that, this, and this. It's the numbers. You don't remember a number right, you're not going to get the answer right. These numbers are correct, okay? So with gas, up to half a PSI, or up to and including half a PSI, we start off, we remove the including, so up to half a PSI. How about we just simply say half, because we're working with this enough, we know, yeah, obviously half, anything up to half, so half. So that's the only thing we're gonna remember in our, in our minds, all right? And then, what was it? It's 3 PSI for 30 minutes. That's a long sentence. How about we just say 3 for 30? Right? There you go. Half, 3 for 30. Okay? And those are just numbers. To anybody on the outside, those numbers mean nothing. To us, they mean everything. To someone asking for a complete table, they would like us to tell them, well, what is it? This is pressure, this is pressure, this is time, but we don't need that. We know what that is. We don't need a lot of words. That's, that's a lot of filler. The numbers are the most important. And this is where we start because it's so simple. It's like, well, it's the pressure we're working at the most. It's the pressure. Uh, there's, so, there's so many questions you can uh, answer with this one because they can ask you what is the max pressure you'd ever run in a building. The blanket statement is half a PSI. And testing. Testing is very important. You, no system is going to be turned back on until it's tested. So you got to know the testing pressures. And you're going to ask, I would, I would say something in the neighborhood of four questions on testing pressure. That's a lot of questions. You know, that's eight, that's eight points right there. You want to know them by heart. So... Three for 30, easy to remember. There's a three, there's a three. Three for 30, okay? What's this three for? What's that 34? Well, we know the half is the PSI we're working with, okay? Half is what they're gonna add. When we see half, then we start worrying about what the sentence says. Is it saying over half, under half, half itself, up to an including half? Remember, the test here is very important that Numbers are the most important thing. We gotta know them solidly. We gotta know them instinctively. We gotta know them without hesitation or fear or confusion. We do this, but on the test itself, now that's when we worry about the words. The words will make you or break you depending upon whether you understood them properly or not. That's where they trip you up on this test. The words, I said, it did. They might as well be snake oil salesmen, okay? Um, so three for 30. So three, you know, three PSI G for 30 minutes. We add the words after we get this down. But this is the perfect starting point for the pressures. I have plenty more pressure questions, but right now, half, three, 30. Half, 
three for 30, okay? And that's why we like repetition, because the more we do this, just like I said, our brain is going to whittle away at, at extraneous uh, neural connections, pathways. It's going to try to make the shortest, the fewest number amount of neural connections for a task. Okay, so that that task gets easier and easier to do. Your brain always works to make things easier and easier and easier. And what stimulates the brain, what motivates the brain, what tells the brain that it should do that for a task? Repetition. The more you keep doing it, the more you keep telling your brain it's got to whittle that down. Okay? We can't reinvent, you know, inventing the wheel. Imagine what a leap of mental, uh, mental evolution that was for the human mind to come up with the wheel. You know, the wheel seems simple to you, but if you never knew about the wheel, the first guy, the first caveman to figure out the wheel, that was a huge mental accomplishment. But that was it. You only got to invent the wheel once. Every time we go to the store to get some milk, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. And, you know, on that same note, we're not going to reinvent the internal combustion engine. Okay? And we're not going to do that. We're going to get in the car where everything's already been figured out, turn the ignition, and go get the damn thing of milk. That's it. So, we don't reinvent the wheel every time. Oh, and look at this. I, uh... I group them again because repetition is uh, the key to success here. So, you know, you hate me as much as you want, but you'll forgive me when you get a great score on that test, when this test feels like nothing to you. Okay, question four. The testing pressure for gas distribution pressures over half a PSI through five PSI is, and we established that it was 50 for 30. Okay. Some more wording we can take out of this, all right? And we can start just remembering pure numbers, okay? Gas distribution pressure, pressures over half a PSI through 5 PSI. So that includes 5 PSI. We don't need to constantly say over half to 5. Obviously, we know that half is this. So let's stop saying over half to five. How about we just say five? That's it. Half, three for 30. Five, in our mind, we know that that implies, or that stands for, well, anything not covered by this limit, it's always a limit, always boundaries. Anything not covered by this, and nothing over five, so five. Okay, does this include 4.35 PSIG? Of course this includes 4.35. Does it include three points? Of course it does. We're streamlining our, we're streamlining our memory. So five. And now, what's the relationship here? Well, if we were stuck here, we're going to take solace that the first two numbers are both 30. Okay, so 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And... We know that this is right here is where the party ends. At this limit, the party ends because, and spoiler alert, it's going to be one hour times, okay? And then that's all it's going to be. It's either 30 minutes or an hour, and 30 minutes is only for the first two. Now, what pressure, okay? Well, just like there was some continuity, some similarity, there was some co coincidence here, same thing here, 50. 50 for 30. Okay? And just in case, sometimes you blank out or you have that same phenomenon where you look at a word and you look at it too hard and all of a sudden doesn't seem to be spelled right when you've known it's spelling since, since you were a child. You know, you, you get that feeling. Well, same here. Let's say for the sake of argument, you look at it and say, I don't remember. I know it's five, but I don't remember. It's like, don't worry. You start, look, you have some numbers that you're absolutely certain about. So, let's say, for the sake of argument, now we start getting all Sudoku on this. This is the missing box. In Sudoku, 
plain old logic is going to help you solve what's in the box. Same here, remember? You could do it in any order you want. Any order that's going to give you uh, results. And you go with what you know, what you're absolutely sure of, and then you notice that as you fill in each one, the logic flows naturally. You don't even force this. So, let's say for the sake of argument, we know that this is testing pressures. We know that this is all about making sure the worst thing in the world is not going to happen. So, if we tested half a PSI for three, we know this number's got to be bigger than three. We know this number was a five something, okay? Could it be five PSI? It, maybe, we don't know, that's why we're unsure, but think about it. Would we really test a system that's running at five PSI max with a test pressure of five PSI? Does that make sense? No, we test something, you know, uh, whatever the max pressure is, we're gonna test over that. You know, we're going to test it at least twice or three times to make sure. Uh, scaffolding, right? Uh, uh, from, um, this is not an exam, but scaffolding. Scaffolding has, you know, by OSHA standards, has to have a rating of, I believe, like four times what it's actually going to hold so that we're absolutely sure that it's never going to fall on us. Well, testing the same way. So it can't be five. So... The next five I could think of is 50, okay? Five, five, right? 30, 30, 50, 30. You know, the, these don't have any direct relationship, but just the way they look at you in your mind's eye and your, the photograph you'll have in your mind that you'll look at and then draw the information from, all of this should now make an impression on you you know, and when, even if you don't remember it directly, you sit there at the test, it comes to you, okay? That part of your mind that you don't have direct control over, that, that's the part of your mind that's going to start giving you the numbers, and they're going to be right, okay? So, the testing pressure for gas, gas distribution pressures over half a PSI through five PSI, we establish your five you know, testing for five is 50 for 30. Half is three for 30. Five is 50 for 30. Those are the first two. That's good. A good foundation. Next question. Okay. The testing pressure for gas distribution pressures over five PSI through 15 PSI is? Well, we know because we've established that the only other pressure besides 30 is going to be one, one hour. Okay, that's it. It'll be one hour. Variations of one hour, but one hour. We also knew um, from uh, just being, you know, code historians that the previous code actually had two hours for certain things, that there were two hour times for testing, but I told you you know, we fig you know, we we've kind of figured maybe the inspectors don't like to hang out for two hours. They shorten it to one hour. So one hour. So even if we didn't know the exact testing pressure on the exam, we can already rule out two of these choices, C and D. Okay, a lot of stuff I show you, good stuff, my secrets. There's also just basic test taking strategy that you still want to use also, and one of them is whittle out choices. Improve your chances of picking the right answer. Before, you had a 25% chance. We just realized here because we've been studying that, you know, man, you know, maybe we don't remember exactly, but we know two is not an answer. There are no two hour test pressures, okay, anywhere in the fuel gas code. So take solace going to be an hour at most. Two hours, no good. You took to those two out, that's 50%. Now you have a 50-50 chance of picking the right answer if we left it at that. But we're not because 
we're still doing we're, we still got tricks up our sleeve so um is how many how much pressure for how many hours well we know it's one so that number is taken care of so we know this is an hour right so we, me we remember one so now we got to deal with the sudoku box now without this just just saying off of memory and remember we said uh uh over we we're going to whittle down the wordage over five psi yeah of course over five psi because we have our five limit here so this is obviously over so what is it up to and including and that's important a lot of places in the code is up to and including or less than this amount but here it's three five psi through 15 that's the wording of the code so we know boom solid 15 we get up to 15 psi okay so at 15 psi now we got to figure what's going to be the testing pressure this is pretty high and this was a limit here. We drew a limit here. Why did we draw a limit? Well, we drew a limit for the test duration because this is where it stopped being 30. And handily for us, it also is where we draw the line for here. So at 15, it's going to be 100. Okay? And that sounds about, 100 sounds like a big number. I would imagine it would be a big number since at 15 PSI, we have officially hit high pressure gas. So it doesn't take a lot for gas to be something serious and we got to go, I wouldn't say it's overkill, but compared to other testing pressures throughout the code, yeah, gas, we tend to, I would say we tend to veer towards the overkill, you know, better safe than sorry. So, it's 100 PSI. Now, this is something we just remember, and, well, 100 is a favorite number. 50 is a, is a favorite number. 100 is a favorite number in the code. So, 100 is good. All right. Now, just to make sure to verify, how can we use the question itself to prove to ourselves that we're on the right track or our table is good? Well, 15 PSI is huge. When we went from half to five, that's not that big a difference. It's not that big a jump. Look at the jump in pressure. Three to 50. So not only did we have this line and imagine a limit to help us remember changes, but if we're going to jump from five to 15, I seriously doubt we're going to keep it at 50. So, 100 sounds good, 100 is a choice. The only other choice in our 50-50 chance of picking the right answer, 50, it just didn't seem to logically follow, given the, the you know, this vein of overkill in the code, 100. So, 100 for an hour, half, three for 30, five, 50 for 30, 15, 100 for one, okay? Next question, the testing pressure for gas distribution pressures over 15 PSIG. PSIG, by the way, is pounds per square inch gauge, okay? Pounds per square inch gauge as opposed to just PSI. I'll say PSI for short. I'll write PSI for short because, well, when we're thinking PSI, how do we know the pressure? We're looking at a gauge. Why make the distinction with PSIG? Because there is always 15 PSI no matter what. If you, I'm standing right here, there's 15 pounds per square inch being exerted on my body because that is the pressure the height of the atmosphere exerts on anything. Okay, um, you would say, well, air is air. Yeah, but it, you know, Air has weight, and if you go high enough, that's, high, that's enough air to put weight on you. Just like if you go deep enough in the ocean, you start feeling it. Same thing, it's 15 PSI. So, to show that we've already allowed, or to show 